Hello, it's Andy Nolch here. I'm at day four of the mission to Melbourne um, mass protest, you could call it. It's, it's going to be in total five days in a row of uh, protests. And today's theme is farmers. So I'll go around and uh, talk to a, a bunch of farmers and find out what the socialists are doing to their farming. And, and uh, if there really is going to be some mass starve out. So what the government's doing is it's implementing policies that are destroying our farmers, destroying our food security, and that is their intention. They bring in these policies under the disguise of climate change mitigation policies. Now, what what what, what are the changes that they are, they are doing? The first the first thing that we've noticed is back in 2007, under the supposed climate change. Uh, environmental policies, they started to destroy the Murray-Darling Basin Irrigation Scheme. It's Australia's biggest irrigation scheme and they brought in their policies to put a stop to it. But how did they do that? What did they do? So what they did is they got a whole heap of so-called environmental scientists who put together information about the health of the Murray River and the lower lakes and the Coorong in South Australia. Now this, this environmental science, and these, these were called the Wentworth Group of Scientists. They were liars, they are absolute fraudsters, and the government needed them to provide false, fraudulent science to base the Murray-Darling Basin Plan 2007 Water Act on. And that's the first thing that we've seen in Australia. Now secondly, we're seeing them sign up to all these Brain dead target 2050, zero emissions. That's crap. All those things now are starting to push back on agriculture and starting to shut down agricultural production. In particular, a big part is the use of nitrogen based fertilisers. They're really starting to attack that, supposedly to mitigate climate change. Now, that's absolute BS. Those are lies. So, but that is a particular weapon that they are using is the legislation around climate change to, to stifle and shut down agriculture. And when will, um, is there a ban on nitrogen coming? So we're seeing bans on nitrogen throughout many areas in Europe and we're now hearing them talking about it here in Australia. So I dare say it won't be very long before you actually get these reg uh, these regulations pursuant to climate change, that they start to shut down the use of a lot of the fertilisers that are used. And, and overall, what's the effect of these uh, these changes? What, what, what's going to happen? So you won't be able to get the yields where you might have grown a crop, and say you get two tons per hectare of a particular crop, you might only get 600 kilos. So, so do you think that's going to lead to? Uh, let's say people in the city, they're just going to have higher grocery prices? Is that what it's going to be? Well, they're, they're going to have grocery shortages. It will start off by getting dearer because supply and demand kicks in, right? But after a while, they're not going to be able to get it. Now, the United Nations, the Food Council of the United Nations, is already talking about government restrictions on how much food you can buy. As, as some sort of a mitigation agent. Whereas the problem is that the United Nations, in conjunction with our governments, are the ones who are creating the food shortages. They are deliberately creating food shortages. They're, they're trying to preempt starvation and in their words, famine, global famine. This is their words, not mine. They're trying to preempt that and make out that it's some crap to do with climate change. It's not. It is their deliberate policies, their specific objectives to starve people to death. OK, and so basically how, how do they control the farmers? Is it, is it they say, farmers, you have to follow these laws and if you break those laws you're going to go to jail or something like that? Yes. Is that, is that how they do it? Yes, much? that's what they do. Yeah. They create legislation and then they enforce legislation. And so they're basically a bunch of lefties in that that are making it illegal to be against climate change and the agenda? So what they'll do is they will make it illegal to say anything against uh, any of the measures 
any of the legislation because they will end up declaring climate change as, uh, as an emergency, as a medical emergency. This is what they've been setting up all the legislation to do. And exactly the same as we've seen emergency powers and emergency declarations with this, this COVID-19 stuff. Two, two. They're going to do it for farming. So it's like a COVID-19, but for farming. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. And, and the legislation that they've got in place now, here in Victoria, now, gives them the right to uh, send their authorised officers onto farms and destroy herds of animals, destroy storages of oh, food, and make the farmers accountable lovely, lovely, for the lovely. cost of destroying their own herds and their own My crops. Name is Dusty Star. That exists now. Okay, so um, tell me, what's going on with the government and farming? Like, what, what exactly is the government doing to it? So, Andy, there's various uh, prongs, there's various uh, forms of attack that the farmers are doing, uh, that the government is doing to the farmers to force them off their land and to cause them to go broke. Now, one of the things is biosecurity. So that's what, something I didn't mention in my speech. And an example of that is that there are acts that they bring in out that means that if a farmer moves a bit of hay on his own farm and he moves a noxious weed from one spot to another on his own farm, the biosecurity authoritative officers can come onto the land and they can actually fine him or close his farm down because he's got one little noxious weed that they, some random person has decided is going to be very bad for his farm. They can make him burn his crops, they can make him kill all these animals and he will have to pay for it. Wow, so it's like, it's like yeah, the government taking over the farms and um, stuffing it up, basically, what what is happening now is is the supply of uh, food lowering because of these changes that the government's doing. Yes. So farmers are feeling very threatened. They don't know when they're going to lose their farms and lose their livelihoods. A lot of farmers are selling their farms because they're so fearful of what's going to come. I mean, right? Um, what what have you noticed in the farming that you're involved with? What what has the new world order done to you? Well, now we're getting the climate change BS, right? So now we've got the new climate bill that's going to say, oh, well, by, I think it's 2030, we're going to have our emissions down to a certain level. By 2050, I think they're going to have zero emissions. So guess what that means? They're going to come onto our farm and tell us that our cows are burping too much. And we need to now reduce our herd to, renew, to reduce the burp. The burps, or they're going to tax us with a with a burp tax that is going to destroy our business because we can't afford it. Yeah, so it's clearly just it's clearly a, um, a like a communist takeover of a capitalist system where you know um, farms should be free and businesses should be free, and the government's coming in and taking them over. And it's like um, COVID, where the government came in and, and told gyms what to do and all this stuff. And of course, all these businesses went bankrupt because of it and people lost their jobs. I'm breaking, say it again. Yeah, so two farmers uh, from Canada have put out a video to say that authoritative officers have come onto their land without a warrant, without even letting the farmer know they're there, because under the Climate Change Act, uh, legislation, they can measure your water because if, that, if you're using too much nitrogen fertilizer, that's not good for the climate. So they take a sample out of your river, measure your water, and say that you've got too much nitrogen and you're gonna get a fine. But when they leave, and the, two days later, that farmer goes and takes his own sample of his uh, river water, finds that while they were there, they poisoned his water with arsenic. Now, why do you think they did that? Is, that? is that because they're then going to come back and give him a fine for having arsenic, or they just wanted to sabotage his farm? No, they want to, to kill our food source. Yeah, yeah they want to kill so they, the yeah, animals so that the, drink the, the water. Gov the government's trying to sabotage the, the farms? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. They want to, cl and the same thing's happening in Holland. The government, and the same thing's happening to us. The reason they want to put us out of business is to so that big corporations can take over our farms. They want to be able to dump all their chemicals on those farms, trash those farms, make us all sick. And when we're all sick, those same companies 
that own the chemicals, own the pharmaceuticals that are going to then so-called make us better. Yeah, it's, it's a big monopoly takeover of the farming industry, so it's going to lead to less food for us and higher prices and bad, bad quality food. Yeah. in the treatment plants. So all I'm saying to the Australian people and Victorian people, start to get on program of what you're drinking because it ain't clean water anymore. It's actually damaged water and it's damaged water by our government sectors. And all I can say is each politician needs to start to stand up and clean this act up in our waterways because it is right across our waterways right now. Um, what Wade and Carlene have both done today is great, but I'm going to say one thing. I'm down in a food chain around Thorpedale area with Spuds. They've had nothing but trouble with waterways as well. They're getting billed for their water to put on their Spuds. They're coming for every sector of the actual primary producing area. And what it is, is the primary producing area is run by legislations that are getting paid by these people in the parliament. And that's where the problem is. People don't realise this. The, the, the legislation by primary producing and our legislation for the farmers is being sold. It's being sold with money to quieten all the farmers down and destroy them all. And if people don't realise that, you're going down a wrong way because you aren't making the money like you used to once, once upon a time. Now it's going to get less and less because they're affecting every farmer throughout the whole of Australia. And that's the whole idea of this lockdown pandemic. And as far as I'm concerned, what Wade and Carlene are doing, stick with it because you've got to listen to us as people, as farmers. That's all I've got to say. Cool. And can I ask you, um, you two, I want to ask two things and give me a quick answer. What's the deal with GMOs? Okay, the GMOs, I'll tell you exactly what they're doing with GMOs. They're actually suppressing the, the actual seed chain. That, that GMO stuff does not grow unless it's modified. So what they're actually doing is destroying our, our food chain through a seed product. So the GMO will be actually only be able to be brought by a government sector again, right? Then each buyer, such as a grower or carrots, onions, potatoes, will have to buy that seed because they won't be able to support their own seed. And it's modified, and it's genetically modified that it doesn't grow from that product. You must buy the GMO. Now, if you have to buy the GMO every year, it's gonna break the farmer even more because the farmer is not gonna be able to afford the seed the fertilisers to put under it to get it up out of the ground and also the actual water to put in to make the food. So that means you lose the food chain and that's exactly what they're doing to us. If the farmers don't start to wake up right now, you're going to lose it and you're going to lose it totally. Alright, so, so what's the deal with the, um, the government? What are they doing to farming at the moment? <laughs> they're doing a lot, lot to farming. I, I suppose the biggest thing they're doing is they're controlling the water that farmers have relied on for hundreds of years um, and it needs to come to a stop. And can I say something? Um, I noticed that they they pretend like there's a drought when there really isn't a drought. They're the ones who have been messing with the water supply. Yeah, well, Australia is all about drought. Um, there's no change in climate. Australia is known, there's been longer droughts in Australia in previous years, but see, they won't look back more than 20 years because if they look back more than 20 years it beats a narrative of climate change so uh, yeah as for droughts it's just a part of Australia you have 10 years drought you have 10 years of good weather you know so droughts that the government go on about aren't droughts and yes they control water they stop water when the farmers need water let water go when farmers don't need water. You know, it's... Uh, so they're it's, using climate change as an excuse to fuck up the, the water supply going to farms? Yeah, for sure. For All sure. Right. And what else are they doing? Uh, well, now they're trying to push farmers out. They don't want farmers at all. Um, they want to push this uh, World Economic Forum and everything else that's going on. They want everyone to eat bugs. Well, Shit, I ain't gonna eat bugs. 
Um, mm. I can live off the land. I can, there's a lot of other stuff out there you can eat without eating bugs, you know. With the farming you do, what have you noticed that they're doing? Is it the water? Well, it's not just... Uh, water's about the biggest problem, but it's not just about water. They want to um, cut the, the amount of herds that farmers have, they, which means that, you know, if you're rich, you can afford to buy a bit of steak. If you're poor, well, you go without, you know. Um, and do they really want poor people, to, poor people to eat bugs? Like, is that seriously a thing? Yeah, well, uh, they've been trialling it around the world, you know. They, they have these uh, food expos and everything else and, and what's the main thing that's advertised through local news or local media is the bugs that are there for people to try. The government. You're going to own nothing and you're going to love it. Yeah. Is what they say. Yeah. And what about... Um, do you think a lot of these inner city lefties have no idea what's going on with the climate and they just buy the lies that ABC push? No idea at all. No idea at all. But if you want to find out what's going on about with the climate, um, do your research. Get out there, look around, listen to what other people are saying besides your local government. And uh, Malcolm Roberts, One Nation, he is one to listen to. He's on the ball. He's got a long history of um, CO2 gases because he worked in the mines, you know. That was his job in the mines. CO gas, CO2 gases aren't causing climate change. Yeah. You know? It's a, it's less a huge than, hope. It's a less than 1% of the gases in, the, in our atmosphere is caused from humans. Less than 1%. Yeah. How's that changing climate? Well, we've uh, actually listened to a lot of stuff that's happening overseas as well and, and it's the same story that's going to be happening here soon and and, and nobody's listening. And um, like as, as we heard today, it, it has already started and, and we're just, people just aren't hearing it. We've got all kinds of different mobs. I don't know exactly who the, who's doing it, but they took over the fishing industry. And now I'm from Port Albert, a little place called Port Albert. And we used to have, like, there was, you know, 70 odd fishing boats, and now there's virtually one or two. And that's because of their climate change bullshit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, it's a lot to, yeah, yeah, I guess that that would have something to do with it as well, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, using, they're using the environment against us, you know, as a, as a weapon to um, control us. It's all about control. And yeah. power, so um, yeah, and the farmers, well, they're in the same position now, and and because they're trying to take control with food. You know, there's a lot of talk this morning about the water rights in Australia and what the government's doing um, uh, with the water management of this country, uh, and it's devastating for the environment. You know, here they are preaching about uh, climate change and saving the environment and being environmentalists. Uh, yet they're they're doing everything in their power to to destroy that and, and destroy farmers' ability to produce food effectively. Um, they're already farmers are already battling you know the elements, the financial costs uh, and the legislative um, complications just just to get their product to market and, and try and turn a profit. Um, let alone jump through all these all these new hoops um, that are being presented uh, by the bureaucracy for no no good reason apart from to constrict um, and destroy food supply for more control. You can stick dictator Dan up your ass. You can stick dictator Dan, that lion thieving man. Stick dictator Dan up your ass. <laughs>